It's no secret. The key to having a productive garden is to have healthy soil. And even if you think your native in-ground soil is too loose and sandy or maybe too heavy and full of clay, you can make any soil better. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that and help you keep it that way. Now the first thing to understand about native soil is that it's made up of minerals, ideally equal parts of sand, silt, and clay. But we're not in the perfect world and depending on what part of the country you're in, you probably have soil that's either more sandy and loose where water runs right through it because the soil particles are so big, or you're in a part of the country like I am where you have heavy clay soil and the water just sits there because the soil particles are so small and they just pack together. But in either case, you can make the soil better but it's harder to do that into the in-ground native soil when you have a big area to work with. And that's why a lot of times people will go to raised beds or containers because it's easier to modify the soil. Now, no matter whether it's in-ground native soil or in a raised bed or container, the best way to modify it, to get it to where you need it to be, is to add organic material. And ideally, compost is great for that because it makes soil that's heavy looser and soil that's loose, it makes it hold together better and it's the best of both worlds. Now, as an alternative to compost, you could use rotted leaves or straw or degraded wood chips, grass clippings, or any combination of these or more. But the best single option is compost because it's typically made up of more than just one natural ingredient. What makes compost work so well, but nearly any well-rotted organic material will work, is that it contains material that helps loose sandy soil bind together to hold more water and nutrients, and it helps break up heavy clay soil, so it's looser to improve drainage and air infiltration. Compost is the best of both worlds, as I say all the time. More importantly, without organic matter, those mineral components for native soil don't give your plants what they really need to thrive. But the organic matter contains billions of microorganisms that will convert material in the soil to organic nutrients. They will feed the life in the soil and the plants to make everything healthier. It's really what you need to bring the vitality to your soil and plants that you want and need for a healthy garden. Now, if you're trying to improve your soil, whether it's sandy to begin with or heavy clay, you can improve it with the compost or the organic matter that I talked about. Now, how do you know if you're getting there or you get there? And so there's a test I call the squeeze test, and it involves trying to reach a goal of getting soil that looks pretty much like this, where you've got nice, earthy, dark colored soil. It smells earthy, no off-putting smell like soury. That wouldn't be good. But the reason it's called a squeeze test is that when you get a handful of it and you squeeze it together, it binds just like that right there. But it doesn't bind so hard that when you run your fingers through it, it doesn't break apart. This is what you're after right here. Now, you can do this in your containers or your raised beds like I do with all of mine. This is homemade compost, but you can purchase it as well. But if you're trying to amend it to your in-ground beds, your native soil as well, you can do that. But then the question is, how much do you need to amend? Because the in-ground area is a large surface area. So I would focus on the first six inches. That's where your primary roots are going to be, and that's where they need the best soil possible. So that's what you want. If it's in-ground, six inches. If it's in a container or a grow bag or a raised bed, do as much as you can. And don't feel the need to till it into your soil because your soil will be full of microorganisms and earthworms and other creatures that will be taking the nutrient-rich organic matter down deeper into the soil for you. So it's a very easy and effective way to continue to make your soil better and add back nutrients that were likely taken up by the plants in the current growing season. Now, once you get your soil as you like it, and that typically doesn't happen overnight, but it could, but just be patient and be okay with the fact that you're building the soil health over time. But whatever, once you get it to that point, continue to make it better like I do right here with my garden soil. I always come back and I add more compost every time I work the soil about twice a year by adding organic material or compost. That's how you continue to add back to the soil to make it better. All right, so just to recap, you can make any soil better, whether it's your native in-ground soil or you're doing a raised bed or container or grow bag, it doesn't matter. The key is adding organic matter and remember, the squeeze test, that's what you're after, that's your gold standard. And then once you get your soil the way you want it, don't forget to continue to improve it. Once or twice a year is good, and that way you're replacing the nutrients that the plant is taking out throughout the year. But if you do that and you're a little bit patient, you're gonna end up with some amazing soil and some very productive crops in the meantime.